So if everybody wants to open up the um, glycolysis review while we're letting people into the Zoom, you guys can work on that. Three slides. So that should be review of concepts from our lecture on Tuesday. So we're just gonna review the glycolysis that we did together on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, you guys did a POGL where you um, investigated glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, even fermentation, I think. So you guys covered a lot of content yesterday. Today, we're gonna break down the aerobic respiration piece, that Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. Hopefully makes sense of all of that. And then something I thought looked like a little bit of fun um, designing our own experiment. Okay, so we're gonna go through this, check your work. If you missed a couple, you wanna fill them in, right? So that when I'm done with this, you're ready to turn this item in. So um, these are just click and drags. I will do the first one for you. Um, number five, this is, uh, oops, we need not to be in presentation mode. Um, number five is our DNA. You'll remember that chloroplast and mitochondria have their own DNA. We learned about the um, endosymbiotic theory where they were engulfed. Um, the outer membrane should be easy. Just take the outermost label, number two. The inner membrane, it looks like there's a second membrane inside. So number one is the inner membrane. And that actually has a name, it's called the Criste. So the Criste is all folded. I picked number three because it's showing the folds. So the folded up Criste increases surface area. This is where our electron transport chain takes place. This would be analogous to the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast. The matrix is the filler. So again, this would be analogous to the stroma. Remember the Krebs cycle or the Calvin cycle have happened in the stroma. So the Krebs cycle is gonna happen in the matrix of the mitochondria. So the two processes are very analogous. Okay, why are mitochondria called the powerhouse of the cell? So I'm gonna call on some people for this page to help me out. Dylan said he would be ready to help me out. He doesn't have a mic, so you can type it in the chat if you'd like. Why are mitochondria called the powerhouse of the cell or shout it out if you found your mic? Because it provides the energy, says Dylan, good job. Number two, I think was Riley. What types of cells have more mitochondria than others? The cells that are more active. Yeah, cells that are more active. And on the slide before, it talked about the muscles as an example. Uh, Taylor, I think I gave you number three. The simple sugar is broken down in the mitochondria. Um, glucose. Yes, you are correct. Number four, I believe, goes to Jonathan. In humans and other animals, where do we get our glucose from? From eating food and getting nutrients. Perfect. And Evan, number five, what energy carrying molecule is created? Yes. And in the chat box, he gave me ATP. ATP. Yeah, you know me. Okay. So this is an, a manipulative, if we had a smart board, we would all go up and move things. And it's always fun to get up anyways. Um, unfortunately, we don't. And if I could figure out how to let you all, I guess if I had made you all editors, we could have done that. So I'll get us started. Um, glucose, remember, is a six carbon compound, no phosphates. In the end, what will glucose become? You can shout it out or you can put it in the chat box. What am I gonna put at the end? Glucose at the beginning, what's at the end? You can give me the names. Anybody shout it out or put it in the chat. Two pyruvate molecules. Yes, two pyruvates. So basically cut glucose in half. Glucose doesn't have any phosphates, neither will pyruvate. Okay, so I got my beginnings and ends. In order to change glucose, what first has to be used? What is inputted into the process? Shout it out or type it in the chat. Is it ATP? 
It is. So ATP is added. We're going to strip off a phosphate, right? So take a phosphate off of this one and put it at the end of glucose. Take a phosphate off of this one, put it at the other end of glucose. Now I have a biphosphate molecule. I think it's fructose biphosphate, doesn't matter. Six carbons with two phosphates. And what does ATP become when you take a phosphate off? Shout it out or put it in the chat. ADP. Yes, that is right. So adenosine triphosphate loses a phosphate and you have adenosine diphosphate. We took two phosphates, so we'll have two ADPs. Now the next thing is gonna go over here. In order to then break our molecule in half, I need to break a bond. So electrons will be released and so will another element. So which molecule am I gonna work with now? Which molecule will be able to break that bond? Shout it out or put it in the chat. NAD plus. Yes, so NAD plus is gonna go in there, right? It's gonna break the bond. It's gonna steal a hydrogen and become NADH. The second NAD plus will take an electron from this one and a hydrogen and it will become NADH. Okay, so now we've broke the bond right there. So we haven't lost any phosphate yet. So I have two, three carbons with a phosphate. So what is going to happen to this molecule here? Either what will it become or what is added? Shout it or put it in the chat. Either what molecule goes here or what am I adding to change this molecule? Is it a pyruvate? It sure is. So see, we're gonna put this pyruvate at the end there. So see how that molecule looks like this, okay? So I'm gonna add a pyruvate to that one. I'm gonna add a pyruvate to this one. So this three carbon with one pyruvate becomes two carbons with, I mean, three carbons with two pyruvates. Every pyruvate comes off. So I'm gonna start with ADP. Every pyruvate comes off, adenosine diphosphate becomes a triphosphate, so it steals that phosphate. This adenosine diphosphate steals a phosphate, becomes ATP. Another steals a phosphate from this one, becomes ATP, whoops, becomes ATP. And another steals a phosphate and becomes ATP. I told you I had a couple too many. I have two too many. I don't know how I did that. So don't worry about those. Those aren't to be used. This is correct. So in the end, I used two ATP. I made four, so I get four, two out of it. Any questions or need any of this repeated on the first three slides? So in your Google world, right here, aerobic respiration lecture and glycolysis, um, the glycolysis review, you are now done with it. That's good to go. Let's open up. Um, I'm gonna go through the aerobic respiration PowerPoint. There's a Google slide set for students if you wish. I told you before, I'm not making copies of those anymore because it just clutters up my mailbox. Um, but you can make a copy of it and then it's editable if you wish to use it. I tried to delete um, words that you would be able to fill in after the fact this time um, so that maybe you could use it as a review piece later if you'd like. Okay, so for this process, we mainly just wanna know what goes in and what comes out. So a review of the overall process of respiration, we start with glucose. Through glycolysis, we break it down into two pyruvates. Then, depending on if oxygen is available or not, if it is, we're going to make a whole lot more ATP through aerobic respiration. If it is not available, we're not going to make any more ATP, so it's not very energy efficient, um, but we're going to make, um, we're going to go through fermentation. So today, I'm just going to talk about aerobic, aerobic respiration, AER is referring to oxygen. 
So this is um, respiration with oxygen. Every carbon from glucose will become CO2. So this is where the CO2 in the atmosphere is coming from. When we come back on Monday, I'll talk about the anaerobic respiration. So A-E-R is referring to oxygen. When you put an an in front of a word, it usually means not or without. And so without oxygen, you would go through fermentation. This allows glycolysis to continue, okay? So we'll talk about aerobic today, anaerobic Monday. So here is a graphic of the processes we need to talk about. Monday or Tuesday, sorry. Tuesday, we talked about glycolysis happening out here in the cytoplasm of the cell. We turned glucose into pyruvate. Today, we're gonna move into the mitochondria. We'll go through a little link reaction, also called um, acetylcholine formation. The Krebs cycle, similar to the Galvin cycle, and the transport chain. Electron transport is very similar to the electron transport in photosynthesis, okay? So those are our three steps. On the test, I might not ask you for all of the steps in each process, but I would ask that you know these three in order, right? So we would wanna know glycolysis first, then acetyl-CoA, Krebs, and electron. Okay, so acetyl-CoA formation is our first step in the aerobic pathway. So remember we had pyruvate, which had three carbons. We're gonna strip off a carbon and you'll find a, a pattern. Every carbon we take off today will become CO2. So every carbon becomes CO2 and every NAD becomes NADH. If you remember our carbon from glucose had a carbon in the center and then it had a hydrogen and it had an OH molecule, right? So the hydrogens, are going to be added to NAD to become NADH. The oxygen will bind with carbon to become CO2. Okay, so this is going to form acetyl-CoA. The CoA is referring to coenzyme. Okay, so along the way we release CO2 and make NADH. So today, I just want you to know what goes in and what comes out. We won't get bogged down in the steps, how we get there, okay? So this is the simplified version of um, the link reaction. Pyruvate goes in, acetyl comes out, CO2 and NADH. This is happening as pyruvate is entering the mitochondria. That's where it's going to happen, okay? So two pyruvates will form two acetyl-CoAs. The acetyl-CoA you see right here entering the Krebs cycle. Notice what's coming out, CO2. Acetyl had two carbons. Each one will become CO2, so two CO2s. Each of these also creates NADH. We're going to make one ATP and one FADH2. So as acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle, the carbon from glucose becomes CO2. There's nine reactions, nine intermediates, nine enzymes are needed. It's a pretty complex process. When you get to um, AP biology, we'll talk about a few of those steps. Today, we're just gonna talk about the ins and the outs, not the actual steps, okay? If um, an organism is a pretty simplistic organism, like a bacteria or, um, or a yeast, they simply don't have all the enzymes needed to go through this process. So they would go through fermentation rather than aerobic respiration. So along the way, we're changing NAD to NADH. It serves the same purpose as NADPH. Remember that was an electron acceptor and it was moving hydrogens. We're also gonna make a new one, flavonoid adenine dinucleotide, which is FADH2. Um, we make that in the recycling phase of oxaloacetate, which you don't need the name. That's fine. So NADH and FADH2 are produced, and they will go into the electron transport chain, carrying their electrons, carrying their hydrogens. Okay. So acetyl-CoA formation goes into the Krebs cycle. These are all of the steps. We're going to take one carbon off at a time. Each time we take a carbon off, it becomes CO2 and NADH. 
Along the way, one turn makes one molecule of ATP and one molecule of FADH2. So in the chat or shout it out, how many times do you need to go around the Krebs cycle to break down one molecule of glucose? One molecule of glucose, how many trips around the Krebs cycle? Is it yeah. two? It is two, yep. Yeah. So glucose broke into two sets of pyruvates. Each of those go through the cycle. How many um, CO2s will I get um, total in the breakdown of glucose? Total. Chat or shout it out. How many total CO2s will I get from the breakdown of glucose? Glucose is formula C6H12O6. Will I get one, six, 12? Every carbon becomes CO2. So if I have six carbons in glucose, I'll get six CO2s, okay? Pyruvate gets converted into acetyl-CoA. So a two carbon is going into the Krebs cycle. So you're only gonna get two CO2s out with each path. How many total NADHs will I make in two passes? How many total NADHs will I make in two passes? One, three, four, six, eight, two, So counting the link reaction, we will get eight total. Okay, let's get back to the PPT. So acetyl-CoA formation, Krebs cycle. Now, what are we gonna do with the NADH and the FADH2? We're gonna go into the electron transport chain. They are both electron carriers, right? So they're gonna bring their electrons, put them in, remember that chain of proteins. They're gonna drop off their hydrogens. NADH becomes NAD, FADH2 becomes FAD. All those hydrogens are gonna be moving through the pumps. So NADH, FADH2 are transporting electrons and dropping off hydrogens. In the process, they will make 32 ATP. So the majority of your ATP, the majority of your energy comes from this process the ETC. In AP, we'll call it chemiosmosis. So that's a test question. Where does the majority of your ATP come from? The electron transport chain. So um, in this graphic, I like this one as it shows a better movement of the hydrogen atoms. So remember, they're being pumped through the proteins because they're going against their gradient. So pumps mean active transport. They're going to diffuse with the gradient to make ATP, diffuse through that ATP synthase. We've seen it before. It's the same as photosynthesis. It's just going the opposite direction. So this time, instead of being pumped into the thylakoid and diffusing out, it's being pumped out of the matrix and diffusing in. Makes sense. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration are opposite reactions, right? Okay, so um, this, I just wanted to show you how the electrons are moving through the electron transport chain. So this one is gonna be NAD. So notice it dropping off its electrons as they move through. It's going to show you dropping off hydrogens and pumping the hydrogens before ultimately making water. Okay, so let's watch what happens. Electrons moving through, hydrogens pumping, water's being made, hydrogens diffuse through and form ATP synthase, or form ATP, okay? So that's the NADH, FADH2 looks similar, except FADH2 goes in at a second spot. Every hydrogen is making one, two ATPs. So FADH2 is dropping off two hydrogens, so it's making two, four. This is how you get the large number of um, ATP molecules. 
So FADH2 drops off two hydrogens, two electrons. The electrons get bound to oxygen to form water. Hydrogen diffuses through ATP synthase to make ATP. We're almost done. So that's that animation. So this again is just zooming in on what's happening at that molecular level. So hydrogen's pumping, NADH becoming NAD plus. Test question, what's the final electron acceptor? Oxygen right here. Oxygen combines with hydrogen and electrons to form water. Again, remember that was like one of the first steps in photosynthesis. So again, photosynthesis and cellular respiration are opposite reactions. Hydrogen diffuses through forming ATP. So they're going with their gradient, turning that enzyme to connect a phosphate with an ADP. We refer to that as phosphorylation. Final electron acceptor, those electrons come out, get bound to oxygen and hydrogen to form water. Test question usually. Okay. So this is a summary you can use to keep track. Remember I said what I want you to know is what goes in and what comes out. So um, glycolysis coming out, two ATP, two NADH, two pyruvates. You can read it. Link reactions, Krebs cycle, electron transport. The number here is going to be consistently different depending on your resource. We're going to use 32. It makes 32 ATP. So depending on the cell, depending on the efficiency, um, depending on the enzymes, you do make varying amounts. So we're generalizing 32. I stole the graphic, so I didn't. I could probably change the graphic and make it say 32. Okay, so what questions do you have about that process? That was a lot of steps. Okay, so review that PowerPoint on your own later because our, our next activity doesn't really go and ask a whole bunch of questions about the process. Um, and usually that's what your follow-up activity is. Today's activity, we're gonna go and design our own experiment. So I'm just gonna show you, a, oops. I'm gonna show you a little bit about that in the Google Classroom. You're gonna click this uh, Cell Respiration Inquiry Lab. The Cell Respiration Inquiry Lab. Ooh, a couple of people already did it. Good job. So you're gonna go, oops, not there. You're gonna go here. The first thing you're gonna have to do is it's gonna ask you what state you're from. So click Michigan. I had to update my Adobe Flash. You might have to update yours. All of these things are clickable and they talk to you. So you want to have your audio on, okay? So here's our problem. You are setting up a snail aquarium at home. It's loud. Your aquarium kit contains a bag of snail eggs on an Elodia plant. The instructions say to pour the contents, including the Elodia, into the aquarium but you're not sure why you need the Elodia. Why might Elodia plants be important in maintaining a healthy ecosystem? In this investigation, you will use snails and Elodia to explore a biological system. You will form a hypothesis about the relationship between snails and Elodia, and then design an experiment to test your hypothesis. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. Why might Elodia plants be important in maintaining a healthy ecosystem? Or what is the relationship between Elodia and snails? Or why is Elodia needed in my aquarium? Okay. Explore the lab to learn what is available for your investigation. Um, so each of these tabs are gonna talk. So I just turned my sounds off because I don't want it to talk right now. Um, so each of these things, these are, are what we have to work with, right? Here's our Lodia, which is a, a water plant. Here's our snails, all of this stuff. Um, you'll click on or you hover over it and maybe it talks. So it'll tell you what each of these things can do for you. Go to your lab notebook. Background, that's gonna be more information. In the lab notebook, you're going to write a hypothesis. Try to use if-then statements. 
your experiment, scroll through here, use your experiment. You're gonna write down um, your dependent variables, independent variables, and how you're going to carry out your experiment. Remember, when we write up an experiment, somebody else should be able to repeat our experiment. So we want to use details. We have a data sheet for collecting data and then analysis and con conclusion. Unlike the gizmos, this is not live streamed to me. So I don't see your papers unless you physically give them to me, okay? So um, here under my lab notebook, I, um, I have the choice to print down here. I print. Now on my computer, this is what I get. Under destinations and you pick your printer, you can choose to save as a PDF. Then I can just upload that PDF to my Google Classroom or I can save to Google Drive. I know not all of my computers have that option, save to Google Drive, so you might not. Um, but if you do, you could save it to your Google Drive. It saves it as a PDF and then you just attach it to your assignment, okay? I know one of my students had trouble um, getting those directions or those options, so I'm not sure what, what device he was on last hour. Um, but look around, there's, there's gonna be some solution to your problem, okay? If you can't find print, do a screenshot of your lab notebook, that, that'll work too, okay? So this is our activity for today. Um, it's a follow-up to our cellular respiration um, lecture, maybe it would have fit better last week when we were doing the connection between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, but that's okay. Um, so what questions do you have?